Ah. Welcome, folks, ah, to another fun size but still erotic episode of It Crept from the 80s. Folks, today, this is going to be a little different. Just one step beyond the 80s, if you will. This isn't technically an 80s show, but it's still on the cusp. Here's what I say. I say, I still consider certain properties, still certain franchises, certain television, cartoons, what have you, things of that nature, to be 80s-centric, even though it's in the 90s. So I, I give it up to maybe 93, maybe 94, and then things really started sort of changing. Um, but so I feel like 90, 94, it's still 80-centric to me, and it certainly was like that growing up, and I was in my mid-teens by that point. Uh, but today's show is from 1990, and it's called Parker Lewis Can't Lose. I love this show, folks. Um, again, when I do these fun size bits, it's, it's about everything that I love, and it could be obscure, it could be very mainstream. Um, this strangely enough, is also one of those shows or those properties that a lot of people don't know about when I'm talking about it to them. Uh, Parker Lewis Can't Lose was essentially, I guess when it first started, um, <clears throat> at least to us kids growing up, well, again, I was a teenager by this point, uh, it felt like a Ferris Bueller ripoff. It was very... You know, Parker Lewis was basically Ferris Bueller, and they even had, like, uh, sound cues and things like that that you would find <laughs> in the Ferris Bueller movie and that they kind of put into the first half of the first season of Parker Lewis. Um, Parker got away with a lot of shit. He couldn't lose, basically, and Ferris couldn't lose. It was just very similar. Um, but then... There was a real, like, like mid-first season, a real change to this show, and it became its own thing. And I'm going to say right off the bat, it was original, but again, it was it was kind of ape in the, park, uh, the Ferris Bueller thing. So, <clears throat> it ended up being, to this day, one of my favorite television shows of all time. And it's only three seasons, which is ghastly. Ghastly, because this is a show that was ahead of its time, truly. Um, for somebody like me who loves and loved absurdist comedy, weird, surreal, goofy-ass, but smart comedy, Parker Lewis was tops. Tops. The people making this show were very smart and knew their comedy. Um... I mean, this is the type of stuff where characters are floating. <laughs> There's mist that appears out of nowhere. Uh, you know, sound effects. It's it's like if Sam Raimi and the Monty Python and the Zucker Brothers all got together and made a television comedy. Um, that's like Parker Lewis. Uh, so Parker had his best friends, Mikey and Jerry. And Jerry had this long trench coat. He was like the nerdy friend of theirs. And he would pull just about any, like, fax machines, you know, blenders, anything out of his coat. And it, they would be magically working. And, you know, <laughs> he had like a giant, like, they'd need to find like a number or who, 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 you know, who was this person and where did they live? He'd pull out like a fucking dossier and... They'd pick through it. I just, it's hilarious. And every time he did it, you'd hear Velcro when he pulled something out. It's just that weird type of stuff. Um, there was the big jock, the, the, the mean bully. His name was Kubiak. But he was also, you know, he was a, a giant with the heart of gold, basically. He could be mean when he needed to, but he was very sweet and dumb. And he ate just about everything. Anytime, like, Kubiak did something good, they always pulled out fish for him and dangled it and dropped it. <laughs> it was just so good. 
Um, but their main nemesis on the show was Miss Musso, the principal of Domingo, Santo Domingo High. And she had a lackey named Frank Lemmer. And Frank was hilarious. He was basically like a goth, very mm, serious and militant and and spooky, all wore black. He had his pony, he had a ponytail. But every time like you saw him, you would hear like wolves howling and... You know, he he could disappear and appear out of nowhere. <laughs> it was just fun. Miss Musso, like, every time she opened her door, it would slam and, and the, the fucking glass would smash. Uh, she'd always have this, like, if, if you were going to the principal's office, she'd go like this. And it'd go, and then, like, the person would just, like, float into the principal's office. Or sometimes she would like cock it and you'd hear it like and she'd do that shit. It was just really fun and goofy and weird and absurdist and I, I loved it and it was the trials and tribulations of, of being a high schooler and, and it just was so unique and cool and there was a lot of guest stars, a lot of very cool like odd guest stars that would appear on the show. Ozzy Osbourne was on the show. You'd, you'd see like just so many celebrities just pop up. It was very bizarre, but cool. Oh, and their dad, Parker's dad, uh, ran a video store. So they would do a lot of episodes in the video store, which was cool, especially for a you know, freak like me, like a movie freak like me. And his sister, his younger, her, his younger sing, sister, Shelly, was uh, always tried to thwart his his can't losing much like jennifer gray in ferris bueller uh the sister was always you know how is you know this ain't fair you're getting away with everything well i'm gonna throw a wrench in the plans and that was shelly and she was uh the little sister in adventures in babysitting who was obsessed with thor uh who i love but um yeah, man, the show is so good, and it's you can get. There's only three seasons. You can get them all on DVD, but for some reason, the second and third seasons are so hard to get. And the third season, I gotta be honest, I don't even know if they actually ended up putting out that third season. Maybe they did, and maybe I had it, and I can't remember, or maybe they combined two and three. I just can't remember. But it's very hard to find. Um, and it's super expensive. Whereas the first season is like, you know, 15, 20 bucks to get, which is fine. But yeah, it's very rough. And I've had the season before and I've sold them and then I re-got them. <laughs> Things like that. But um, again, it's, an, it's another one of those shows that the, the fans that are there and the fans who knew about it, like absolutely go cuckoo for it. And uh, like I follow Corin Nemec. I follow a lot of the cast members uh, on Instagram and they still are very like cognizant of the fans that love Parker Lewis and recently there was a convention I want to say out in in France or Spain or so, it was somewhere European some foreign place and they did a convention and then they, they did a Parker Lewis reunion and everybody showed up the cast like showed up and you saw this video and people were losing their minds for these for this cast and i i would have like probably been crying because, <laughs> because i love this show so much um but i uh i want to say about 10 13 years ago i had the the honor of meeting corin nemec who played parker lewis at a chiller theater convention and he was so cool so down to earth he he loved the fans, he just loved hearing, like, the, and part, and he's done so many other things. He was also on Stargate, and, you know, he's done, he's been a working actor since, but, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. Everyone's gonna know, oh, that's Parker Lewis. Um, but he embraces it. He doesn't, like, put it down like some actors do if they were, you know, famous for a role. No, he embraces it. Um, and we talked about it, and we talked about how ahead of its time it was and the absurdity and the comedy of it all and yeah there was just it was a very special show uh and an odd little chunk of the early 90s that felt 80s but wasn't and it just 
it's a great show and I love it. And I always make it a part of my Saturday morning sleepovers. Um, cause it's fun to see people who have never seen it before sort of react to how weird it is. Um, but yeah, that's a show I loved in my teen years. Um, this, and, and today it is still one of my favorite shows of all time. It was just so great. And if you have the means, I highly recommend <laughs> seeking it out. Parker Lewis can't lose. So goofy. I think, you know, it may take you a couple episodes or it may take you the first episode, but I think at the end of the day, you might get hooked and you might want to watch some more because it's, it's really clever and it's really good. And, uh, I love it. So coolness, all that great stuff. All right. Thank you for, for watching and please hit subscribe. Uh, please comment, uh, hit the bell so you know we're getting that new, you're getting those new episodes, you're, you're informed. Uh, tell your friends if they're obsessed with the 80s, if they're obsessed with pop culture, all this good stuff. Please spread the word and uh, we will see you on another, yeah, another erotic episode of It Crept from the 80s. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.